So this is a video that I'm going to do about meteorites and I've purchased some meteorites from some reputable dealers and what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to etch it. I'm going to actually polish it and etch it. This particular meteorite is a iron nickel meteorite and it was found, well not it, this one wasn't found, but the mass, part of the mass was found in 1906 in Sweden. And it's called the Mulio Alusta meteorite. I think that's right. <laughs> that's a real hard one. I'm just gonna put up the name of it right beside me here and then you can try to pronounce it yourself, but it's pretty hard. Mulion Alusta. I think I got it. Anywho, so this was found by Steve Arnold and Jeff Notkin of the Meteorite Men on their episode where they went to Sweden hunting for this particular meteorite. So this is a chunk of one of the stones that they found and Steve kept it and then Steve sold it to a person who I bought it off of. So here it is. So what I decided to do is because the the slice, you know, the slices are not really polished, they're pretty much just cut rough, rough cut, not really polished down. I'm gonna polish one end, I'm gonna polish this end to a really good shine, like a mirror shine, and then I'm gonna use an acid to etch it so that you can see the Winman's statin pattern. <laughs> See, I got that one right too. This meteorite stuff is really hard with the names. I mean, come on, really? Win Winmanstatin pattern. Try saying that five times. <laughs> but anywho, I think I got it. Uh, the Winmanstatin pattern, and uh, see what kind of pattern it is. I mean, it's supposedly a really nice one. I've seen a picture of what this should look like. So I'm hoping that it's going to look just like the picture. So let's get started. And. Uh, see what beauty we can find in this meteorite so okay so I have every every size grit sandpaper you'll need to get a really polished surface on this meteorite starting off with the 120 and then I go 180 320 400 600 800 1000 1500 2000 right up to 3000 3000 is the final stage more like a really nice buffer buffing polisher but anyways it's quite a few stages this is probably going to take well over well over an hour of sanding so um, I'm going to three stage I'll show you a little bit uh, further on the progress of this how smooth I'm going to get this before I even attempt to etch it and compared to the way the rest of it is it's got a long way to go so here we go Now I'm doing a circular motion just because of the easeability of it. I mean, I can go back and forth as well, but I think the circular motion tends to cover the surface better. All complete. I mean, I'm not just concentrating on one spot. It's actually a nice circular motion. And as I go higher in the grit, you know, you're not going to see any of the scratches that are being incurred as I'm doing the twirly motion. You won't see a twirly scratchy motion once I get down probably to about 2,000 you won't even notice it but in the beginning it'll be a little bit noticeable but I'm trying to get the saw marks off of this right now from when this thing was sawed or when it was cut so hopefully by the end results it'll be a nice polished mirror finish my arm is going to be falling off at that point but hey it's well worth the effort Okay, so after about, uh, it's been about four minutes since I've been doing this. You'll see a little bit, uh, you'll see here that the lines are starting to come off and uh, starting to look a little more polished, but I've probably got another 
three or four minutes on this grit before I switch to the next one. I'm going to try to get most of the lines off with this grit, so it might take me, like I said, it might take me another three or four minutes of uh, doing this on the 120. So the toughest part is getting the initial saw lines off. Once you get the saw lines off, then you can start going up in your grit and starting to get a more polished look, but it's starting to look okay. It's a lot better than when I started it. So here we go. All right, so I've been going at this for another uh, about three minutes, and I just wanted to uh, mention that even the meteorite itself has its magnetic properties because the filings that I'm getting off are actually sticking to the meteorite surface. So it's actually, you know, a lot of iron is magnetic in itself. It's actually magnetic, not just attracted to a magnet, but a lot of iron is actually can attract a, you know, can attract. Um, metal objects to it as well so it's actually got its own magnetism and uh, judging by this meteorite it's actually sticking there's actually sticking to the meteorite as I'm doing it so it's kind of cool but anyway as you can see I've gotten some more of the lines off they're fading they're starting to go away there's some deep grooves there's like mm, like this, this section here has quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of deep grooves still but as I'm going they're disappearing so here we go I'm going at it some more Okay, so after about 10 more minutes, so so far total, it's almost going on about 17 minutes. And you can see here that uh, it's finally, yeah, there's some stuff coming off. I mean, there's not many lines left. Um, and uh, I got probably about another, I'd say five more minutes to go before I can up it to the 180 grit. So another five more minutes of trying to get rid of these lines. That's a lot of scrubbing, I'm telling you that much. So it's a lot of work. I mean, you can probably do this mechanically on a buffer or something if you have an electronic buffer, but for now I'm doing it by hand. But anywho, this is how it's going. So stay with me on this one. Okay, so now after about 20 minutes in total on the uh, 120, I've got it down to a shine that I think I'm happy with that I'm gonna start on the uh, next grid up on the 180 and then continue along along the way until I get to 3,000. So here we go. Let's pull this one out and see what we're going to do. Okay, I'll pull a fresh sheet. Hang on. But this one, I'm probably going to be at least five minutes on this side and then I'm going to up it to the next one. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30. All together, it's going to be about two and a half hours of polishing. Gee, crazy, huh? But this is what you have to do if you're doing this manually. Otherwise, you know, if you can think of a way to do it electronically with a belt sander uh, that can handle this type of sandpaper, then uh, I think you could probably do it on that, but it's not as delicate. But anyways, here we go. Again, I'm going to do the circular pattern for a while. Okay, so after about five minutes of this, let's see what it looks like. Hmm. Looks pretty good. Starting to see a lot of those lines disappearing, so. Okay, so now I'm going to up it to the next uh, to the next grit. So that's the 180. Now I'm going to go to uh, 320. All right, I'll probably give this about another uh, at least two or three minutes, two or three minutes on this one as well. So 
Here we go. Each grit tend to get, tends to get a little bit easier to start doing your twirl like this because it's a little bit smoother and it's not grabbing as much as the harder as the uh, the harder grit does, especially the 120. Very difficult. But uh, this is pretty smooth. So let's give this a few minutes and see what it's like. Okay, so after another four or five minutes of this one, which is the uh, 320, I'm now going to switch to the 400. <clears throat> oh, hold on, I'll let you see what it looks like. But take a look at that. It's pretty, uh, getting pretty shiny. I don't see a lot of scratches anymore. So pretty much most of the sandpaper scratches are, are now gone. But I'm going to still go through the process of continuing on through these uh, lower grits until I get a mirror shine. You're probably going to be able to see the camera reflection when I show you this, when I'm actually done this whole process, right? So there you go. Okay, so on to the next one. Ooh. So the next one is a 400. Let's take a fresh sheet. These are relatively inexpensive. I mean, each pack of these cost me, I think, um, six dollars for a pack and there's four in each i mean initially it's going to cost you about fifty dollars maybe sixty dollars in total to have all these sandpapers but you can do many specimens you could probably you know you're probably going to get away with doing you know 10 or 15 um specimens you know before you have to go buy more so it's not it's not too much of an investment fifty dollars but you know okay so let's go on to this one i'll probably spend again about another four minutes on this one so that's so much easier. So much easier to move around on the sandpaper. Okay, so what this looks like. Wow, it's quite nice. It's got a really nice shine now. Getting there. Can't see my eyes in it yet, but I can definitely see my face. I can see my fate, my features. So, okay. So now I'm gonna up, up it to the. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go up to the 600 now. So here we go, 600. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm already on the 600. I'm gonna up it to the 800. Going to the 800. Okay, so now I got it to a finish where I can actually see my face in there. Eh, there's my eyes. Yeah, so it's getting there. It's not complete. I'm still going to be going up three more grits. So here we go. Let's go to the next one. I think the next one is. I don't think I'm on a thousand right now. No, I'm on 800. So the next one's going to be 800. So, uh, what am I at? Uh, 600. Where's my 800? Oh, there it is. All right. So now I'm going to go to a thousand. And I'll spend about, probably about four minutes on this one as well. Okay, so after four minutes on the uh, 1000, you can actually, now I can really see my, my mirror image. I can see my face, no problem. I can see my eyes, my nose. And uh, yeah, it's very, very good. I'm going to do the last two, and then I'll save the very buffing one for last. So I'm gonna do the one, th sorry, the, the 1500, and I'm also gonna do the 2000. And then I'll show you the, I'll show you when I'm on the very last one, which is the 3000. So here we go. Okay, so that was the last, that was the 2000. So that was about another four minutes, so another four minutes in total. And uh, look, you can actually see my eyes now. There you go. So my eyes, you can see it's, it's pretty much a mirror finish. I mean, not a perfect mirror, but I could Definitely, you know, pluck an eyebrow out by looking in this meteorite at the moment. So, 
and I think it worked out pretty good. So now we're going to go down to the 3000 for the final, for the final, uh, final polish will be the 3000. And this one is a little bit of a different disc. It's so soft, it's almost like a sponge, but it's very, very soft. So anyways, wow, oh, got some sharp edges on this meteorite. So I'm going to be polishing this one for, I'm going to give it about uh, three or four minutes, just like this. and. Uh, Three or four minutes like this, and it'll be ready for the etching. So. Okay, and there you have it. That's a perfectly mirrored surface. I mean, you can see my eyes in there definitely. It's a really good, really, really, really good mirror finish. It took a lot of work. I was over an hour of polishing, so you can just imagine the other two sides. I'm going to eventually do them. I'll have to do them and uh, do the same process that I just went through with this. So it's going to be like another hour, another two hours. So in total, one, two, three hours of really hard work just to get a mirror finished. And then you still got to etch it. So the next step will be to etch this. And I'll show you what that pro process is like. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to etch this. And I'll show you how the process is for that and how I go about doing it. Nice mirror finish, eh? I'm happy with the results. It's a gorgeous meteorite. So the next step in this process to make an etching on this is going to be going to be using ferric, ferric chloride. Some nasty stuff. So I'm going to have to wear some gloves. Um, I'd wear a mask, but it's pretty well ventilated in here. I'm just going to stay away from it so that I can actually talk and you can hear me. But you should wear a mask for this if you're going to be doing this. You know, if you do a lot of it, um, the concentration of this can make you kind of Mm, well, you see, there's a skull and bones on there. It won't kill you, but it, it doesn't smell very good. So I'm going to keep my distance from it so I can do this without a mask. But I will be wearing gloves. So Okay, so I'm going to dip it in the acid. I'm going to try to be quick with this because if I don't go quick, I suppose it's a it's very quick process. I'm going to do like 30 seconds top to dip it in the water or else I could actually start to burn a black pattern on here, which I don't want to do. I'll have to start all over again and polish it back. So let's see what happens. Get this thing nice and wet. Down. Oh, look at that. I can see the pattern coming out already. It's beautiful. Look at that. Put a little bit more on. Okay, so now I'm going to wash it off because it looks pretty dark. Dip it in the water. There you go. Nice, beautiful pattern on this one. Very nice, eh? So look at that. There's the wind, windman statin pattern, and it's a beautiful, nice, quick way of doing it. Bang! Beautiful. So this was definitely a success. So thank you for joining me on this adventure on how to etch a meteorite and also how to polish a meteorite. As you can see, the process was not an easy one. Altogether, total, it probably took me about two hours of sanding to get it to where I was able to etch it. And uh, it's going to be a little bit uh, more time consuming to do the rest of that meteorite, but once it's done, it's going to be well worth it. It's going to be very beautiful. I'm going to just uh, gonna have to probably seal it with an epoxy to keep it from rusting. But I'll post that on another video on what kind of epoxy I'll use to seal the uh, inner matrix from any further deterioration as far as rust is concerned. But thank you for joining me and hopefully you enjoyed watching the video.